Thank you for joining us for today's message. We believe we can go anywhere in the world from right here in Lamarck, Texas and reach people just like you. If you'd like more information about Abundant Life, please visit ALCC.org. You can also text the number below if you would like to support the church financially. Be ready for a powerful message that's gonna impact your life. Other microphone on? Are we on there? Can you all hear me okay? Give me just a little more volume. Glory to God. So, there have been some things that have happened this year already. And, you know, last year almost felt like sometime I wanted to explode because we were working on some things that um, uh, God had uh, brought across our path as a church. And, and um, uh, one of them, of course, just brought millions of dollars to Abundant Life Christian Center. Somebody shout hallelujah. And I've talked about that before over the past, I don't know how many years now. Uh, I know in just four different uh, times, God would miraculously do something. And so uh, by the grace of God, I was able to put $20 million into Abundant Life Christian Center on four different transactions. That's just going to sink in. But... Uh, Brother Rick knows about every one of them and, and other people do, you know, that are in that leadership and understand those things. And God has been a blessing. So I'm not a novice when it comes to the topic that I'm going to talk to you about. And I believe over these first 35 uh, years or so uh, of the church, uh, now that we are somewhere around $175 million, y'all want to have a business meeting? $175 million in tithe and offering and giving and things that we have done in total income and revenues that have come into this church at 601 Delaney Road, Lamarck, Texas. So don't tell me he don't know what he's talking about. Go, been there, done that, and thank the Lord for it every day. Look at two people and say, Shikamosai, come on, say something. So the Lord's good to abundant life. And that's uh, why some of the reasons, of course, that we are uh, uh, stretching and pressing and if we go through tight times and we just ask God uh, I'm talking about on, on our operations and the things that we do uh, we just ask God for wisdom how do we modify ourselves? how do we do that because uh, I do believe in in a form of a budget I don't want to get into a lot of detail I'll do that in class time if we do a class sometime but we do have a budget uh, and so all of those things are very necessary and so we just believe God for that and uh, the way I pray, I pray that God will bless the men and women of this house. Amen. That men and women at Abundant Life Christian Center will hear, be glad, and put their trust in the Lord, the Bible says. Amen. How many of you are glad that if you and I take the gospel out, many will hear and be glad, come on, Psalms 40, and put our trust in the Lord. Amen. God will give you wisdom. He'll give you insight. He'll give you understanding. And uh, during this particular season right now, uh, if you were here on watch night and you were here during December when I was talking about things to come in uh, 2021, one of the things that the Lord began to speak to me about is a whole new crop of millionaires being raised up uh, who would have a gift of giving because if God's going to bless you uh, like that, you can be sure that he has got a purpose for blessing you. Anytime you talk to God about prosperity, he'll talk to you about purpose. Two amens right there. Amen. Let that sink in your spirit because God is not talking to you about being a blessing uh, or being blessed just so you can be, I call it, you know, filthy, stinking rich or something like that. You know, that's just not the, the way it works. Uh, God will bless you. He'll increase you. He'll bless your family and, and all of the wonderful things like that. But he has a purpose when he does that. There's a reason God is going to speak to you, and he'll give you insight. He'll give you understanding. And uh, if God uh, begins to bless you, and that anointing begins to uh, happen in such a way that you see opportunity, you recognize it, you move into it, and uh, as you obey the Lord in that process, you don't stop tithing, you don't stop giving, you don't stop praying, you don't stop reading your Bible, you don't stop witnessing. Uh, you continue to live for God, whether you're uh, working at the plant or 
or, or somewhere else, or whether you're the uh, owner of the business, or whether you're retired and just doing your own thing. Whatever you do, never get to the point where you're so blessed that you can't obey God. Uh, because I'm going to pray that God will unbless you back to the level where you can't obey God if you don't do that. It's very important to obey the Lord. Uh, regardless, Paul said, whether I'm abasing or abounding in Philippians 4. He said, I've learned whatever, uh, whatever state, King James says, whatever state I'm in, therewith to be content. Somebody shout content. Yeah. It didn't say complacent, nor does it mean complacent. It said content. He said, I have learned whatever condition I'm in, whether abasing or abounding, whether I'm on one of my low days or one of my high days, whether I got enough month, uh, you know, a money left over at the month or whether there's not enough money, so to speak. Either way, I'm going to have a contentment because I know God will supply all of my needs. He goes about five verses later and he says, I know God supplies all the need. But he says, I learned it. Can I just say that divine contentment, which is what you should be rolling in, whether you're abasing or abounding, divine contentment is not earned. It's learned. You learn whatever state you're in there to be content, the Bible says, to have a joy and a peace and an inner confidence that uh, today's not forever and whatever I'm dealing with right now is going to change if I will apply some principles from the Word of God uh, in my life, on my business, in my family, uh, however uh, it is, and then grow and learn in those things because the kingdom of God is not just an endowed kingdom. It is a learned kingdom. Yes, you were saved. Yes, you were brought, translated out of darkness and delivered from darkness, translated into the kingdom of his dear son. Yes, you're a Christian. We're uh, as much as any other Christian. You're as much a Christian today uh, as far as uh, your, uh, your salvation, uh, as much as the apostle Paul was. And thank God through Jesus, we are that. But from that point on, it's learning time. I said it's learning time. Uh, the kingdom of God is not a potluck supper. It's not a hit and miss proposition. It's like sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, sometimes you win, sometimes you don't win. You know, living for God, yada, yada, yada. No, no, no. Exactly the opposite. You go from glory to glory, from mountain to mountain. I know between mountains sometimes there's valleys. Uh, I know when, when, when God opens one door, sometimes he shuts another, he shuts one, opens another. And you continue because sometimes it can be like hell in the hallway. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Going from door to door. But you continue to serve God in every circumstance. And you expect uh, to see because one reason, Paul says, uh, you'll expect to see the blessing because you have learned. Uh, the Bible says that tribulation works patience. Has anybody ever said, God, I'm just praying you give me patience? Can I just encourage you to not pray that? Because tribulation worketh patience. And the Bible says that patience works experience. And experience worketh hope. And hope makes not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our heart. How many of you have read that in the Bible? So it's very important to get that in your spirit. Those are not there just like, uh, you know, just Christian colloquy of some kind, you know, that we just talk about a little bit and we say, well, that's real nice, that's real cute. You know, tribulation works patience. Listen, when you got born again and filled with the Holy Spirit, God placed his nature inside of you. And that nature that's on the inside of you, part of that. One of the qualities, that fruit of the Spirit of God in you is patience. But just because that's on the uh, inside of you doesn't necessarily mean it comes out unless it gets worked out. And tribulation worketh patience. You ever get a, you ever get a splinter or a sticker in your fi uh, finger or something like that? Anyone ever had one of those? And, and you're trying to get it out. You got the tweezers and you know and and if you want to get even with somebody, help them get that out of their finger with a needle and stuff. But anyway, and you're trying to get that out of your finger and it won't come out. And finally, you just say, well, I guess I'm going to just have to let it work out. 
And so you go about your daily routine and you're doing whatever you do and you kind of uh, lose the sensitivity to it. Then all of a sudden, here at some point, you look at that and, and it just kind of pops out. You just get it out. Your routine worked it out. That's why God says, work out your own salvation in fear and trembling, Philippians 2, for God is at work in you to will and do his good pleasure. He's saying, but you're going to have to work it out. You go about the routine of living for God and what's on the inside of you begins to work out. It begins to come to the surface. I hope this is helping somebody just for a moment because it's not, it's not like a roll of the dice or, or playing a, a game of cards and just hoping you win sometimes. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. You know, good time Charlie's got the blues and all that foolishness. That's not the way the kingdom works. The kingdom of God is within you. And as you go about the routine of learning and, and evolving or, or changing into uh, his image more and more every day in your life, as you do that, what's on the inside of you begins to come to the surface. That's why it's good to, to smile sometimes. Even if you just have one tooth, you know, just smile. And let the joy of the Lord begin to be released in your life. How many of you think if you have joy, you ought to tell your face about it? Yeah, just get up in the morning. I, I remember years ago when I was in sales and uh, uh, even after I was a, a business owner of a couple of, of nice little businesses and I would get up, I'd never done sales before. I didn't know the first thing about it. I was highly intimidated to get up in front of anybody, put me in a baseball uniform, football uniform or something. I'd be just fine. I'd put a microphone in my hand singing with a guitar. I'd be just fine. But if I had to stand there and talk, I literally could not do it. It was, I would just freeze up. It was a terrible uh, thing that I had. Uh, and, and so it, it, it was what I was. But the more I made a decision, I'm going to do that. It began to, what God had put in me began to work out. Are y'all listening? But sometimes you have to do it through that problem. And just let God work out in you what, what is, what the gift and the call, the anointing, the purpose, the plan, the vision that he has. Uh, so uh, for your life, it's very important. And I just pray tonight the Holy Spirit will speak to you. And I'm not really sure what I'm going to entitle this. So you just uh, give me the liberty of maybe entitling it at the end of this short teaching. And I'm not going to be here very long with this tonight. I know tomorrow's school day for, for parents and kids and stuff. And so uh, I'll try to honor that this evening. But uh, more than anything, we want to honor the Word of God. Amen? Amen. So we're going to ask God to to just work out some things in us as we learn on these Wednesday nights. And I may take this off of the internet. I may not put this on the internet during this time uh, on Wednesday nights because I want our church to come to church on Wednesday night for this teaching. The Bible says that we do not cast our pearl before swine or they will turn and rend you. Would you like me to talk to you about that for a moment? Since we're going to talk about increase and wealth and and should we pray about money or not? And probably once every five or ten years, you'll hear me do a short series like I'm going to do on this topic because I just never do it. I can almost count on one hand in 35 years the number of sermons that I have uh, spoken on this one particular topic, uh, on money. Uh, we received tithe and offering at the church, and you hardly ever hear me talk about it after that. Uh, on, on any night. Anybody says it different, I just tell them prove it out because it's prove it because I'm just saying that's the way it is. And so rarely will I do this, but I believe that in this season, because of the, the public display of what God has just done through our negotiation and all of that, that, that began back in, I think it was in April, it might have been in March of last year when COVID hit. Uh, when COVID hit, also the blessing hit. And so for the next 10 months or so, uh, we were under an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement uh, with Amazon. And uh, so we would not talk publicly about it. They wouldn't talk publicly about it. Uh, they went under contract with us. A lot of things have to take place on something like that. I promise you, I enjoy real estate. Anybody that knows me knows that I do. I'm not a real estate agent. I've just bought and sold a lot of real estate in my lifetime and a lot of land uh, I think it's a lot, so I mean, if you, you, you may not, but I think it is. Probably over a thousand acres now, just since I've been the pastor of the church here. And so, now listen, God's a good God, and He knows how to bless His people. 
and you have skills and you have talents and you have abilities uh, that God has placed in you, every one of us, but you've got to bring those to the surface. And sometimes you have to work them out through prayer, through obedience, through servants, as you serve the Lord, faithfulness to the house of God, certainly doing what you know the Bible says you should do. Uh, the kingdom of God is not just a kingdom of love. It's also, uh, in, in, in the sense of the, of the four-letter le four word, just, just love, 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 everything's love, there's also obedience. There's also uh, knowing the Word of God. There's confession of the Word of God. There's repentance of sin, which is the love of God that we're able to, to even do that. Amen. Or else we would all die and go to hell if we couldn't. Somebody shout amen. amen. All of that is, is inclusive because God so loved the world. But we learn how to grow and develop. And to increase in faith, the Bible says, you can increase faith. Faith comes by hearing the Word of God, but you can increase faith. And you can increase faith uh, not just in the healing ministry that God has in your hands, not just in confession of the Word of God, but also in your finances. You can increase faith, with, and anything that faith gets involved with increases you get the God kind of faith in it because faith comes from hearing the Word of God. You have acted on that faith and you can just be sure that that increase is going to take place. From that time on, we ask God to give us wisdom on what do we do with what you have increased us with. Uh, and so it is very important. Uh, for me and my house, we're going to help do our part to help expand the kingdom of God. Operate churches. Come on, that's what we do at Abundant Life. Run schools. Uh, the new Bible school this fall. Somebody shout hallelujah to that. Come on. All of those things that uh, we are pressing into now, and you'll hear much more about them uh, during this particular year. It's a new season, and the Lord said it's time for some new things. And uh, as a pastor, I refuse to pastor any church when I can't say, uh, I call it TSTL, thus saith the Lord. I believe we've heard from God. We have direction, and we're going that way. Somebody shout, I am blessed. I am blessed. So, I believe God wants the men and women of this house, faithful, committed people that are a part of this particular corner of the vineyard. Thank God for all churches and all Christians that love the name of Jesus. But I tell you, at Abundant Life, the blessing of the Lord is going to overtake people in the way. I cannot wait. I, I'm just, I'll give you a little bit of testimony uh, about some things already tonight that uh, some of you look at me like, like, oh my God, I can't believe he's... He, whatever but you if I were you I'd want to come up here and shake my hand right now and say oh God give me a little of that you know what I mean but don't don't come up here you don't have to do that but thank you I'll do it after church but uh listen you know, it's powerful that those things can transfer anointings can transfer and I believe in Jesus name men and women that are faithful in the house of God and are learning and growing in the blessings of the Lord I believe we'll hear testimonies about it also John uh, in John chapter 15, the first thing I'll talk to you about this afternoon uh, uh, will come out of John 15, and until I get the title that I want for it, maybe I should just say, is it right for Christians to pray that God would bless them with money? And, and I'll give you a better title. Praise the Lord. John 15, 7, what's the Bible say in John 15, 7? Put it up on the screen if you would, please. John 15, 7. It's probably in red in your Bible if you have a, a red letter edition. That just means that Jesus was uh, personally speaking that out. He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Let's look at that again. Let's read it out loud together. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. So I guess the question is, is it okay for a Christian to pray that God would bless them with money? Can we use that particular uh, verse right there to just settle this issue right now? If you abide in me, everybody shout abide. And my words abide in you. Now I can just tell you that if you are in Christ, and he is not just a Sunday experience, 
are not just a church-only experience in your life, and I, I say the people of Abundant Life are 724, 365 Christians. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. We may not be perfect, but glory to God, we're, we're going to press toward that anyway. But he said, if you will abide in me, he's not saying if you go to church on Sunday, but Monday, they don't even know if you're a Christian or not. No, he's talking about his kingdom being in you and you in him. And he says, and my words, they set up residence in your life. You know, if words set up a residence in you, that's who you are going to become and that's what you're going to do. Can I have a big hallelujah? hallelujah. There's something about that. I saw something about zebras. Does anybody ever watch National Geographic? You ever watch National Geographic? So I like National Geographic, especially when the lions are killing the wildebeest and all of that. There's just something about it, you know, it just... just you know, Tarzan, I don't know, it makes you feel good, whatever it is. But anyway, uh, these zebra, you know, zebra, uh, you know, if you've seen a zebra once, you've seen all zebra. Uh, they all look almost exactly alike. Uh, but the problem is there are no two zebras that are exactly alike. Their stripes are like your fingerprints, and they're all different. I can look at a herd of zebra, go to the zoo and look at them, watch them on TV. I can look at all of those uh, zebra right there, and I'm telling you, there's no way you could tell them apart. They all look exactly alike. But every zebra can tell the other zebra apart. Isn't that interesting? So they were showing about, do y'all like National Geographic? Didn't I say that? And so that same thing, uh, they were showing a, a bunch of uh, zebra mothers that were about to have their little zebras. I don't know what you call a baby zebra, a zebrette or something, or a zebretta. Maybe they're zebrettas. And uh, anyway, these little zebras were, were, were born, and they, they just about basically have them all at the same time because of their migratory uh, things that they do. Uh, and so there's a normal breeding season that's uh, kind of the, the most popular breeding season in the zebra land, you know. And so anyway, uh, they'll, they'll begin to have it, but they have to have these zebras basically uh, in migration. And so as those little zebras, uh, when that mother zebra, she's just about to uh, have that zebra, she'll, uh, their little baby zebra, she'll go over, and is that word right, zebra? You know, you say that enough times that it doesn't sound right, you know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, anyway, she'll, she'll go outside of the herd just a little bit and try to get in an area where uh, she's uh, isolated and she'll have that little zebra. And when that little baby zebra is born, she'll quickly clean it up because, you know, they've only got X amount of time uh, to do that. Otherwise, they're going to be extremely vulnerable to predators. But other zebras always want to come and look at the new zebra. It's really wild, especially mother zebras. So when uh, it's kind of like working in the nursery. Every time there's a new little baby born, a lot of mothers come and want to see the new little baby. It's just part of human nature. Well, anyway, zebras have a nature too. So when that uh, a little zebra is born, that mother zebra takes and puts herself in, uh, and blocks the other zebras from coming over there. And you'll, she'll be turning around. She'll be doing all this. And at first they thought that she's trying to protect that zebra, uh, that little baby. Maybe some, one of the others might be trying to hurt it or kill it. But they found out it programs that first day or two of that zebra's life, it programs in that little baby zebra the strike pattern like a barcode. The, they, they, it, it programs it in that little zebra. And then once it's programmed in that little zebra, you can turn that little zebrat, uh, so to speak, you can turn that thing loose in the middle of the herd and it can go find its mama. It's programmed in. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words get in you and they get programmed in your spirit, they abide in you, you're going to understand what your rights and privileges are being a blood-bought child of God in the kingdom of God. His word gets in you and you begin to pray according to that word. And you can see an answer many times when everybody else is just seeing stripes. You, you can see a meal. You can see the, the thing that you need. And that's what that mother zebra, of course, is to that baby zebra. 
And uh, sometimes they'll have all the little zebras. There'll be a bunch of them as they begin to grow. They're out there playing and just doing what little horses do and, and all kicking and running and all of that. But there's a certain sound. And when they give that sound, those zebras all go back to their mothers. Just like that. Just bam, 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 bam. They can find them. Isn't that amazing? Uh, isn't it interesting? Uh, somebody said, isn't evolution something? I said, no, God is amazing. That's what it is. God is amazing. The creator of heaven and earth. I mean, there's no way that, that things could evolve like that without the intelligence of God making all of that happen. Obviously, God has all knowledge and he's the one that did it. And so it's powerful, but if you will abide in the word and the word abide in you, I actually believe that it is not only a right for you to pray regarding money, but I think you should, uh, I almost think you should repent if you tried to put money outside of your prayer life and your business life and all of those things. You should ask God to forgive you uh, for thinking that God doesn't have enough sense to operate finances through you. So uh, instead of you trying to take the glory for yourself, do exactly the opposite. Say, without him I can do nothing, but with him all things are possible in my life. So I believe I'll just put all of that inside of my prayer life. Uh, always ask God to help you in your character so you're not developing greed and you're not developing the wrong mentality toward money because if you're learning about Christian relationship to money from something you've seen on television or something uh, that your critics and those that are talking about, I heard about you know, some uh, church or preachers that did some something real bad with money. Who hadn't heard about that? But I'd like to tell you, for every one of them that falls, there's 7,000 that never bow a knee to the God of this world. Oh, hallelujah. So you abide in the word of God. Don't abide in the word of the critics. Come on, somebody shout, I'm blessed. You are blessed. And you can either say that and because you're parroting what I say or you can say it and believe it in your heart and you'll not stop saying it because it is the word of God and you are growing and learning and developing in that role. Come on, clap your hands to the Lord right there if you're getting it. The second thing is this very uh, important. I believe you should get it in your spirit. So the number one thing is the word of God. We understand the word of God. Secondly, in John chapter 14, uh, verse 13, put it up real quick, and I'll do, uh, and this is as far as I'll be able to go, it is with uh, just, I'll call it point one and two tonight. Uh, John 14, 13. John 14, thank you. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, also in red, whatsoever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Listen, that is a charged verse of Scripture. I mean, a kingdom of steroid, that Scripture is. Everybody shout, whatsoever. whatsoever. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. The Bible didn't say just ask whatever comes to your mind or your little beady eyes, kind of see and all of that. No, no, no. He said, uh, whatsoever you shall ask in my name, I can do that so the Father will be glorified. Amen. When it comes to praying over your money and praying over finances, whose name are you praying in to be blessed? Are you praying for you to be blessed in your name, for your name, or are you praying in his name so the Father will be glorified with the blessing that you receive? Amen. Is that sinking in? Amen. Listen, motive is everything in the kingdom of God, and character is everything in the kingdom of God. I'm talking about kingdom character. Uh, it, it, it's got to sink into your spirit real strong. Uh, if if Jesus said, whenever you ask in my name, and look, we believe in the power that the name of Jesus activates and releases. But let me tell you something else about in my name. My father's name was Pastor Bill Hallam. Bill Hallam, 50 years in the same town. Cindy and I have been, uh, this year was 36 years ago we moved here. January the 3rd, 36 years ago. My mom and dad pastored approximately 50 years in the same town. 
And what a, what a privilege to be able to say that. And my dad, when he went to heaven in his, in a, you know, in his mid, uh, kind of mid to late 80s, when he, he and mom, when they went to heaven, they had a good name. They had a good name. And as a boy growing up, I know my dad used to say things to me like this. He'd say, now, when you go to school, I don't care what everybody else is doing. Uh, there's some things you're not going to do. I heard, this, I heard this lecture more than one time, and he didn't just sit there and grill me. He just said, this is the way it is. And he called it in the Hallam House. This is the way we live, and you put your name in your house. He said, this is just the way it is, son. And there was five of us boys and two girls, and we all got this talk more than once. And he'd say, I don't care what everybody else is doing up there. And I'd say, well, Daddy, everybody's doing it. You know? He said, no, 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 everybody's not doing it because you're not going to do it. And we're not going to do it. This is how we live. We live different. We're Christians. We don't, we don't go out and party and revel and drink and carry on and do all that kind of stuff. We rejoice and have fun. We celebrate. We'll do all of that. But, you know, we're not boozing. We're not doing drugs. And you're not going around sleeping with women. Girls, I'm just telling you, that's not going to happen. And if, if he said, I'll come get you, I promise you. You know, I believed him. The reason I believed him is he never lied to me. I believed he would. I believed he'd have come up there and yank the rest of my hair out if he'd have had to. But he would say things like that. And, uh, uh, and he would say this to me. Now, look, this is just a father talking to his sons. You've got to understand. And to his children. So this isn't a haughty thing. He's just talking. He'd say, because your name is Hallam. And this is the way the Hallams live. And, and, and I was a hard-headed, uh, can you believe that? I was a hard-headed son. I was as a teenager, I don't mind telling you. Uh, I, I, you know, I knew everything. My Lord, I was 14, I knew everything. There was nothing in the world uh, I didn't know already. And I was 14 years old. And, and, uh, but it didn't make a lick of difference. When he, when he laid down the law, uh, you know, that six-foot-two guy, that was it. You get a six foot two red headed blue eyed ex marine, you get them upset, and the tribulation period starts. About that time, and, and I learned to square dance young when we would promenade back and forth a little bit. And, and, uh, and he believed, and if you spare the rod, you'll spoil the brat, you know? So he wouldn't do it. Uh, he'd, he'd do what it was necessary if I decided I was going to rebel against it. It's one thing for me to make a mistake. It's another thing to me to willingly disobey what he had said. That's two totally different things. And so anyway, it's that way. If we, uh, he, he began to instill in me. I want to say this right as I close right now. Paul, if you'll come help me. And um, uh, it, it was real important to me that I not uh, shame my father's name. And he, in, in, a, in a wise way, not in a, in a haughty way, but in a wise way, he would say, that's the way the Hallams live. And did we mess up? Plenty of times. You can be sure. But there was a gear on the inside of me that did not want to let my mom or my father down. Uh, I, I, I wonder how many times I used to say, if I could just become as good a man as my dad is, I feel like I'm a success in life. And that's not because he was perfect. That's just the way it was in the, in the household. And so I was blessed to have a good family, obviously. And, and I thank God, you know, for my mom and dad, who, who probably had all of their own issues, but I don't know about any of them because they, they just didn't air that laundry out. They just wanted their kids to do what was right. And they did not want me to disgrace that name. And, you know, maybe, I, I'm sure it's this way with girls too, but there's something about it, guys. Honor is a big thing. Who knows what I'm talking about? And Jesus said, Whatsoever you ask the Father in my name so he can be glorified. To learn more, visit WalterHallam.com. You will find a list of resources to help you in your daily walk with Christ.